Uh oh, an error occurred. It says we're live. You were live. Okay. All right. Hey, we uh, sorry for the the weird start. Uh, uh, Streamyard gave me a, a message that said an error occurred, so I had to click something. So hopefully we're broadcasting. <laughs> Hey, pl please let us know in the comments that you're actually here and can watch. That would be really great. So uh, anyway, welcome to the Q&A show with Alan and Marshall. Obviously, this is not Alan Howe. This is my friend Davis Slago with B Graphics. Uh, Alan is a little under the weather today, so uh, uh, Davis is sitting in for him. So appreciate it. Anyway, so how are you doing today, Davis? I'm good. I got to say congratulations. This is your and Alan's 200th episode. 200? Um, who knew? Benchmark. Right? Yeah, we were going to do some sort of crazy celebration, but he's not here. We'll do it next week. <laughs> there you go. We miss you, Alan. Get better. Yeah, we do miss Alan, and we hope he feels better. He's he's a little under the weather, so uh, that happens, you know. Um. So anyway, yeah, Shane's watching on Facebook. So thank you, Shane. Appreciate it, buddy. Um. Anyway, uh, so uh, it's good to have you here, Davis. And before we get into a lot of stuff, if you don't know who Davis is, Davis, why don't you just introduce yourself? Where do you live? Talk about your shop. What's going on with you? Perfect. Uh, my name is Davis Slagle. I'm the vice president of B Graphics, located just south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have a shop that has transformed from screen printing uh, to a full-on direct-to-film shop. Um, <laughs> We are implementing uh, a lot of automations. We focus heavily on online stores, and the uh, the transfer uh, transformation has been exciting to say the least. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And um, so it's a lot of fun. And uh, Davis and I are going to be talking about the Atlantic City show uh, mainly because we we're both there and we saw that show from two different perspectives, right? So. I'm a speaker and I'm an industry guy, right? But Davis is a shop and we both kind of come at things with different perspectives. So I think that's going to be kind of fun to, to kind of chat about here in a minute, right? So it, anyway, if you're watching, uh, please say hello. Uh, we'd like to see, you know, always who's here. We really would love it if you would share that you're watching. That really helps us. Um, and But more than anything, we need your comments. We need to know what's bugging you, what questions you have. If we're talking about something and maybe you do it differently, we want to know your answers. That's that's the whole premise of the show is a Q&A show. So please uh, engage with us. That's kind of how the show works. Um, and I wish we could just bring on everybody, uh, but we're not doing that. <laughs> so we just do via the chat, right? So just throw that in there and that really helps everything out, right? Also, we know that a lot of people watch not live. Most of our viewers, the lion's share of our viewers, uh, all happen um, uh, offline, right? You know, we have uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of people a week watch. Uh, sometimes it's like 4,000, 4,500, right, a week. Oh, wow. And, and uh, But most of these people watch sometime else, <laughs> right? So... <laughs> And that's good because you guys are busy running your shop, making money, printing or embroidering or whatever you're doing, right? And, you know, the 20 or 30 or 50 people that watch live are the ones that just carve out some time to sit with us and engage, and we appreciate you, right? So anyway, we got some people saying hello, so let's get to that. So uh, Frank's here. Good morning. And the new Alan. There you go. You're the new Alan. Cue the new Beyonce song. Yeah. The Texas song uh, for Frank. Uh, Darren's here. Hi from Ohio. Good to see you, Darren. Hi, Darren. And uh, Peter's here. Good morning, Peter. Appreciate you. Right. So thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate all that. And uh, so real quick, we want to run um, the GSG commercial real quick. Uh, we're happy that they uh, – let me get the right one here. Um, and happy that uh, they're sponsoring our show. Really appreciate them. And so here's a quick word from them. And we'll come back with Atlantic City Recap. Here we go. Over the last 70 years, GSG has seen many changes in the apparel decorating industry. But one thing that hasn't changed is our dedication to helping our customers discover 
what's next. As we continue to lead the industry, GSG is here to support your business with industry experts. The latest innovative products, training services, and by delivering the perfect order. Thanks to GSG. We appreciate you. And we got some people who just jumped in. So Dan's here and he usually says pop, but today he's poop. So okay. <laughs> got a little excited. He got a little excited. Yeah. And uh, there's there's some jokes in there that I'm just going to leave alone. Um, Richard's here. Hey, Richard. Richard. Good to hey, see you. Tracy's here from Arkansas. Good seeing you, Tracy. Dave's here. Good good seeing you, Dave. Hi, Dave. Uh, Brian Buffka's here. Greetings from Missouri. Richard says late tuning in because he's watching Brother Ernest's cancer video. Yeah, I just sent you that. We'll talk about that more later, um, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how much I want to get into that. But anyway, um, so glad you're here. And if you're just tuning in, Alan is a little under the weather today, so he couldn't make it. So last minute relief pitcher called to the mound. There we Dave go. Would be graphics. Um, and today, Alan and I were going to do a recap on the Atlantic City show. And, of course, Davis went to that, right? And so um, so curious of what you thought about the show from a shop owner perspective. What do you think, Davis? I kind of had two different days at the show. It was, it, was, it was pretty interesting when I look back at it. What, what um, days did you come so everybody knows? I was there Thursday and Friday. Um, most of the day Thursday got in a little bit after it started, uh, was on the show floor all day and then spent the entire day Friday on the show floor as well, but they were kind of split up. Um, the first day was about relationships. It was about talking to vendors, meeting with our garment distributors, uh, having face to faces with my reps, talking to different people about technology or what their business was seeing, right? And then day two was more on products, mm -hmm. decoration types, add on things for our business. And yeah. it was it was like I was two different people there. And I thought it was actually a great way to go at the show because I, I was strategically focused on what I was trying to do each day. Right. And you brought uh, Stefan, right, uh, who and what is it's let everybody know what Stefan does for you. So Stefan's our production manager. He's the guy that implements our whatever new products we bring into our sales system, make sure they're getting in and out of this. Uh, the sales reps know how to put the order in and the team knows how to get that order out. Um, mm -hmm. So and he's the guy that makes sure this place runs. Right. And did you guys split up or did you walk the show together? We walked the show together, but would split up when it was at different points. He, I would leave him at a booth talking to somebody and I would go look at something else and we'd bring back the different pieces we took. And if we felt like the other person needed to go talk to that person, we would then go switch booths and mm -hmm. get two separate point of views. So we could converse on what we thought without giving the other's opinion to it. Okay. And did you take any classes? I did not take any classes. It's just mostly because we got in late uh, a afternoon on Thursday and we just wanted to spend the time on the, on the floor. Right. Now I was there. I got in on Wednesday night. I flew into Philly and drove down and then um, uh, taught a class on Thursday morning. And I basically walked the show uh, Thursday afternoon, Friday, and until I left Saturday around lunch. And it felt to me like Thursday was the busiest day. And I don't, did you feel that way too? Like there's more people there Thursday than Friday or Saturday? See, I thought Friday was, I thought Friday had the harder head count to get through people um, oh, okay. to, to wait in line to talk to people. Now that may have felt that way because I was looking at products on Friday. 
Okay. I was I wasn't going directly to try to find someone. I was just looking at what people were offering. So I was more in the mix of the crowd versus Right. Hey, can you step off to the side and come meet with me? And I probably burned through more time doing that. So I think that's kind of where I, maybe I saw the heavier crowd. Right. And for those that really haven't been to a trade show, right. Why do you go Davis? Why do you take the time to bring somebody right? And you just there's hotel and there's meals and there's expense to the whole thing. You guys just drive in. You didn't like fly, drove in. Um, why, uh, why go? I can tell you we're going to drop five new products that we found at that show. So we're going to offer something to our customer that we haven't offered before. Mm -hmm. It's going to allow us. What products are you talking about? New transfer types we're not currently offering. So if you don't know who I am, I run a heat press only shop, right? I have no silk screen equipment in my shop. So Although you still do embroidery. We still do embroidery in house and we still contract screen printing. We just don't do it ourselves. Right. But what I can do with some of these products um, and, and you led me to the first one, um, the reflective from Supercolor, the soft from Howard. Yeah. They're just that, badass, right? That so, we, yeah. yeah. We can bring in these additional products without shaking up how we currently operate. Mm -hmm. And we can use them as upsell opportunities to give the customer a more vintage look or to the construction customer, a more a uniform style print with their reflective and their requirements. Um, and there's just like the chenille from stalls that we're not currently selling or the different types of patches. There's a whole realm of things that I can very easily add into my production flow that changes not how we do it. It just changes how we sell it and then gives us an opportunity to make more money. Yeah. And some of this stuff, I think everybody, when everybody's doing the same thing, you have to innovate and offer things that nobody's seen before. And the reason why to go to a trade show is you're going to discover that stuff because nobody's going to come to your shop and tell you, hey, look at this, right? Exactly. And you need to be paying attention. And you've, you know, we've known each other for a while. And you probably heard me say this before is you must be present to win. Right. So you have to go and show up. You have to go find these new ideas and take them back and implement them or figure out how you can sell them. Uh, and also, you know, this is a relationship industry. Right. And so when you're at somebody's booth and you're talking with the guy that you talk to all the time on the phone, um, you know, that makes a stronger relationship. So next week or next month when you call, you know, they know what you look like and, you know, whatever. And, and, you know, I think it's, it's really um, people that have been in this industry for a long time. We have some really firm relationships and trade shows. A lot of times is where we solidify that. Right. Exactly. So, um, There's a comment. Uh, I may skip ahead a little bit here. There's a comment from Josh Ellsworth, but me and Josh are 30 minutes apart. I haven't seen Josh since the last trade show. Yeah. So even though like we, we got to talk for a half hour just on where they were heading, what they were thinking, um, what's next for them. And it was just refreshing to hear like what they're doing with the new fulfill engine and kind of what they envision and where, where the, what they're doing to take it to the next level or add to it or incorporate it with their current business. And you don't get that. If you can't, even though I'm 30 minutes from him, if I'm not at that trade show and pull him aside real quick and get to talk to him, like that, that was huge. I'll tell you something that I don't think a lot of people know is that stalls, the day before the trade show opens, they have what they call their pro day, where the whole day they bring in uh, experts like Dave uh, Connors and Jenna Sacken and whoever, and they're teaching how to do uh, all the stuff with heat transfers. And they're showing these different techniques about how to use a pillow and how to do all these different things, right? And they do that all day long, the day before the show. And that's something that people sign up for. Now, a whiz like you, you, you know all that stuff anyway, so you probably don't take that class. But, you know, it's something that I think that's the reason why people need to go to these shows is because it's, it's education, right? Nobody is coming to your shop to teach you this stuff. And, of course, you can watch – 
there's tons of, they do a great with their videos, you know, I'm in some of them, by the way. And so it's like <laughs> selfish it's plug, like, but, but it's like, well, you know, it's, <laughs> there's a reason why you go to these shows is to take that stuff. Right. And, and Josh, if you're still watching, how many people were in your pro day classes? I bet there's, there's a gazillion. Right. So, um, so anyway, we got some people, uh, joining us. Josh is here. Good seeing you, Josh. Josh. And Charles is here. Better late than never. Yeah, we won't document hey, or anything. So, um, you know, from my perspective, you know, as a speaker, right, I have a different view of the shows, right? And so it was fun. Like uh, on Thursday, I got there before the show opened. In fact, Josh and I walked in together. He was still drinking his coffee. And then I was there when the show ended and on our way out, Josh was on his way out too. And that was kind of fun seeing the same guy and coming into work and leaving. It's, you know, <laughs> that was kind of a fun thing. Right. Um, but um, I can tell you, you know, I had a lot of people in my mid journey class. There was a lot of people interested in that. And that was really good to see. Um, had, a, had a lot of fun teaching that class. Um, and, uh, you know, we can go down the rabbit hole on mid journey, but it, you know, um, what I, I really think it's really great when, uh, and I always talk to people for the class, Hey, where you're from, whatever, you know, there was people in from Maine, from Connecticut, from Ohio, from Missouri. I talked to somebody from South Carolina. Um, you know, so it's not just a local show, like, you know, you would think mid journey, I mean, not mid journey, uh, New Jersey, uh, New York, you know, just surrounding kind of areas, Philly, you know, uh, uh, Pennsylvania kind of. So there's people who got on a plane and came in and had to endure the hassle of, you know, how to get to Atlantic City, because let's face it, it's not the easiest destination to get to. You really have to want to get to Atlantic City to go there, right? And <laughs> I so wish if anybody's listening from my assess that the show was not in Atlantic city, you know, that would be my dream. It would be not in Atlantic city because it's so difficult to get to. Miami's uh, pretty that time of year. Yeah. How come it's not ISS Miami? <laughs> you know, ISS, uh, 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 Bahamas. Right. Right. Wouldn't send, that be a great show? <laughs> send me someplace warm. ISS cruise ship. <laughs> Let's do it. Right. Anyway, so um, I just think, you know, it would be, uh, uh, that'd be interesting. So anyway, uh, you know. You one more, one more little piece on that. If you want me to keep going there, Marshall. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, so this was part of one of their shop talks, right? And if you don't know, a shop talk is a non- you don't have to pay. It's part of the live session yeah, of the class yep. in kitchen. Yep. I sat, in, and, I sat in several of those. They're great. And uh, it was Jenna Sackett. I asked the question to on the panel of it was about decorating. And I said the question, I said, where do you get inspiration from? Right. Like, how do you come up with ideas to create the next product for your customer? Yeah, right. And her answer was simple and easy. And it says, where do you or your customer shop? Oh. If you're dealing with a sports market, right? Mm -hmm. They shop at Dick's. They buy professional team wear, right? Pay attention to what that market's doing. Right. And I'm like, I was kind of doing that, kind of not, like kind of like in the dark. And I'm like, goodness. So I played that card this week with a customer yep. in a on a FaceTime call. Oh, and I said, I said, where, where do you talk? Like wh where your, your, her boss wanted a high end retail look to his store, right? He wanted yeah. something more than just the logo. And oh. I'm like, what kind, of, what kind of clothes does he wear? What kind of vibe is he feeling? And he said that she replied is the Peter Millar high end golf, vintage, casual, upper yeah. country club look. Right. And I just went there and started pulling design trends from these guys in this, that specific field and like competitors of Peter Millar to then develop trends for that customer. Oh, so something I got from that show, I implemented three days later yeah. and the customer was blown away that I asked them that question. Oh yeah, exactly. You must be present to win. Would you have gotten that idea if you had stayed in your office? Not a chance. Wouldn't even have thought of it. 
So here's what I hear a lot of times from people. I can't go to X because I just don't have time. Yep. How do you make time to go to things like that, Davis? You're a business owner. You're just as busy as everybody else. Why did you get in a car with Stefan and drive? What's the what's the drive to Atlantic City from your your city? Six hours there. Six, about. Hours. Six hours one way. Six hours one way. You drove, right? You didn't fly, right? Correct. We drove in. You can't fly to Atlantic City. So uh, well, I guess you can. You got to ride Spirit, and who wants to do that? Right? <laughs> So, but, like, why did you drive six hours? Like, you could have, like, done anything else besides that. Why do that? So, the first part about it, you have six hours, right? I have six hours of one-on-one -on -one time to have a conversation with my production manager. Who's I have 12 driving? hours total. Who's, Who's driving? driving? I drove out He and drove half the way back, and he drove the rest of the way. We took turns. Okay. Um, but we're communicating, right? We're sitting person to person, having conversations for five straight days. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can't tell you during the week. That did he enjoy? <laughs> um, Probably about 30 minutes. <laughs> this is like, oh my God, when's this trip over? <laughs> but he gets to pick my brain too. Like see where, where my mind's at or what I'm thinking or what I'm envisioning. Yeah. Um, and where I'm, I, I envision the company going and how we get there, right? But then I ask questions back of like, what's hard is with your job right now? Like, where where are you having hangups? And we're just having a conversation. We're not at a deadline. We're not trying to get somebody's order out the door. We're not running around with 20 other people asking us questions. Uh -huh. that's, that's 12 hours of conversation that you, you, could, you have the opportunity for, right? Yeah. We then get to then just get to, go through the whole show together. So we're conversating, we're, we're going back and forth with people and it just gives us that much more time to grow together. So do you feel that he has the psychological safety to say anything to you? Cause some people would have a hard time talking with their boss for six hours without saying something that they didn't mean to say or whatever, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I believe so. Uh, I believe we've worked together long enough and uh, developed a good enough relationship and have been on enough trips together where we kind of think along the same way and okay. uh, we good. like to have fun. And uh, I mean, we were out with, uh, we were in the casino at, one night with uh, people from Cap America and Chipley and all these different groups, right? And we were all hanging out watching basketball and it was 15 companies there and we were all intermixing. So yeah. we're just popping around talking to each other. That's good. That's good. Yeah. One of the things I like about doing an event like that is the non-show stuff, right? So it gives me an opportunity to take clients out to dinner or lunch or something and uh, to network with people. And I try to have a different meal with different people every day and, you know, whatever, and talk about things and, um, you know, it, and I think uh, it, a trade show is good for that. You know, our shirt lab events are good for that, right? And, um, you know, you just have to have time for things, right? And uh, those are the really the magical things sometimes because you yeah. get to see people as they really are, you know, And but also sometimes there's a little idea or something that comes out of that, right? And um, that wouldn't true. happen if you were <laughs> there. Right, the, so. tr the true information comes out after the show stops. Well, so. I'm a big proponent that if any of these trade shows, all the real business happens in a bar. Uh, you're, I, I agree with that. It happens in the bar, right? And you need to find out what bar that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, and you, the question you asked is how do you make time for it? You booked a hotel. You just say I'm going, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure my schedule out around it. You you find out where every so where do all the vendors stay, right? That's the hotel you want to be staying at, or you need to find out where the bar that they go to after the show. You know, in Atlantic City, it's Tun Tavern, which is across the street. Uh, like mm -hmm. there's everybody's hanging out in that bar at lunch, right? And and uh, uh, having a lot of really good conversations in that bar over the years, by the way. So. <laughs> You know, and, um, you know, in, in Long Beach, it's that Irish pub across the street. A lot of people go there or the California Pizza Kitchen. Right. Right there. There's a lot of people that do that one. 
Exactly. Uh, and right. if you can pick a show, if you're if you can get to the West Coast, the Long Beach one is the superior of the two, in my opinion. Oh uh, yeah, well that's <laughs> that's the show to go to, right? So Josh says he had probably about eighty in Atlantic City, was sold out in Long Beach at one hundred and forty plus. There you go. Right. So it so this is the reason why you know you go to these things is to take that class. That's thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. John says, coming in together and leaving together reminds me of the sheepdog and Motley Coyote. Yes, exactly. Good seeing you, John. Um, uh, let's see. Charles says, cruise ship trade show would be awesome. There you go. Um, so I beg to differ, Charles. My friend, uh, Bill Petrie has a, uh, uh, he does a thing called promocation. So it's about the promo industry, and they have a whole thing going on a cruise ship. And they're they're getting signups for that right now, right? So that's kind of an interesting thing. Maybe we could do a a, a decorated apparel industry version of that, right? So maybe we'll do Shirt Lab on a cruise ship, right? So if you're coming to Austin, like put that down as what you want for next year is Shirt Lab cruise ship, <laughs> Shirt Lab Hawaii. Sure, Lab Hawaii. Why not? <laughs> hey, that's going to be sponsored by Stalls, right? Right, Josh? All right. So, um, all right. So, uh, what else about Atlantic City? Like, so, what was your favorite booth? What was the favorite nugget that you learned besides the, uh, the Jenna Sackett awesome quote? I'm going to tee up our next topic with the automation, uh, the AI, the, um, the Michelle Moxley talk where she yep. was using bots and creating bots and yeah. how you can take what you do and save yourself X amount of time yes. a day times oh, multiple crazy. days across months yeah. is a piece of information I didn't know. And I wouldn't have heard had I not been there. And yeah. You can only hear a disaster story. He, so I yeah, took sure. all these notes and I forgot, like right here on my desk, this is my notepad that I write all my crazy ideas down on. I forgot my crazy idea notepad, right? And I didn't have any paper with me because somehow when I was packing up for the trip, I forgot to put this in my bag. So I was using, I don't know if you noticed, but I was using the little pad you get at the hotel that's coming to your desk, that's right next to the Bible in the drawer. I was using that as my, and guess what I did when I left? I left it on my desk in the hotel. You know, you all have a notepad notes, in your phone, right? All the whole time I was there, I forgot it. It was sitting right there on the desk. And now I don't have any of those notes. So what I need is I need Ink Kitchen to publicize that video so I can rewrite all my notes. <laughs> so, um, you know. There's a little notepad on most people's phones where you can type in the main points too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, I could have done that, but I did. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, it was such a great talk, and uh, you know Rick Roth uh, with Mirror Image, you know, runs Ink Kitchen. He does such a good job with that. You know, I've spoken a couple times on his panels, and and uh, you know, good stuff. And Michelle. You know, you know, I'm really focused on mid journey. She's doing everything right. And uh, I kind of like play around with some stuff because I'm always wanting to compare, you know, Dolly three with ideogram with mid journey. And I've got my opinions, you know, but she's using all the tools. Right. And she's just like, what's working? And it just just like, you know, and of course, that's what she's doing all day. You know, I'm doing other things. Right. So. And I think it's really interesting um, just how people are using stuff. And by the way, she, during, I don't know if you caught it, but she said during her talk that you couldn't do a hammerhead shark in mid journey. And so what do I do the next day is I push out my hammerhead shark for mid journey thing, just to, just to show her who's boss. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a pot star. By the way, was using the scientific name for that animal. If you use the scientific name in Mid Journey, you always get the animal that you want because, of course, it goes out. That's how it works: is it goes out and finds the images, and now it knows exactly what it's supposed to be, right? So, 
and we're having a bunch of fun with mid journey so yeah. if you're not if you're not following marshall's uh thing uh his uh newsletter it's yeah. well worth the uh investment to jump on board it's that 12, because 12 bucks a week right? <laughs> um, it's cheap so uh yeah midjourneyexperience.com by the way just throwing that out there so all right where are we on time all right so we're about halfway through here uh we got some more folks tuning in lakeisha says hi hi how are you doing lakeisha and brian's here tongue tower in philly was where the marine corps started yep exactly um, did not know that yeah it's, that's why they have all the marine stuff all over the bar you didn't know <laughs> um, I, I, I missed it <laughs> Uh, I have a hard time getting realistic music band instrument. Oh, okay. Like like saxophone? Challenge accepted. Yeah. In mid-journey. Okay. Which one? Let me know which one, Brian, and I'll help you with that. I'll figure it out. <coughs> so, um, all right. So uh, try looking up a particular brand. Let's say it's a saxophone. What's the saxophone that everybody buys? It's the model xj7 saxophone whatever and then also a cool thing to do is the new s ref right uh, i i've got all types of stuff for that i can help you right um s ref really works uh, it makes things a lot better learn to use s ref okay um all right so uh where are we oh i need to show the uh, pulse magazine real quick uh for it's the bottom of the hour so share screen. I forgot, you know, uh, Alan's not here. So uh, I'm not nudging you to do what you're supposed to do, huh? So here's the, uh, by the way, this is look, my website. This is uh, this is uh, Davis's website. So the Pulse Magazine's right here. So this is a uh, GSG, their website. You can go to gsg.com, go to Pulse Magazine, and then... Um, it's not scrolling for some reason. If you click the magazine uh, for apparel decorating, they've got all types of stuff. Uh, there it goes. I don't know what's going on. What what is going on with their website? I don't know. Maybe it's my connection. I'm sure it's not them. I'm quite positive it's me. So anyway, so it's loaded with all kinds of great stuff. There's QR codes for sales. And uh, so check it out, go gsg.com, click on the pulse, and then you can find all types of deals and all types of crazy things just for you to try and a um, good place for uh, all types of things. So, all right. So next topic was, do you remember? Online stores. Hey, how about that? Online stores, right? So. Davis, you're the king of online stores. And for people watching, you guys might have a couple online stores or maybe several dozen online stores. Davis, what's your online store count right now? I believe we're pushing 1,200. 1,200 online stores. That seems like a lot. <laughs> okay. So you've got 1,200 online stores. So how, like, how do you do that? What platforms are you using? How do you managing that? It seems really crazy. How do you make that easy? Because I know you, Davis, you like things easy, right? So <laughs> how are you doing it that everybody else is only doing like 10? Like, how are you doing that? Uh, first thing is we've developed processes, broken them, redeveloped them, broken processes. them again. I think I've heard that term before, right? Yeah. <laughs> Got to come up with a plan on how to do it. You can't change how you make uh, a store every time or how you process the orders or how you print the orders or how you deliver them you mm -hmm. have to build the outer shell of how you're going to make them and for everything from selling them to launching them or to building them to launching them to making sure people are buying to fulfilling the orders and delivering the end product to the customer um, there's all different steps in there and it's it's very important that you have the process worked out for each and every single one of those steps. So what I'm hearing is you don't have what's common in this industry, which is the ready fire aim way of doing things. You have the ready aim fire of doing it. So you're thinking about the outcome first. You've built the process. You're thinking about the end result. And then you're going out and duplicating it. It's rinse and repeat all the time. 
and you're getting you're getting uh, schools and companies and organizations to buy into your process, which is what you're selling, because you're making it easy for them to get the result that they want. Correct? 100%. Uh, the only time we do the other, the ready, fire, aim, is when we're trying something new for the first time and we're going to see how it works. <laughs> it's, but we only try it once before we make a decision on what we're doing. Um, right, you can't right. be afraid to test something new though at the same time. So yeah, uh, we innovate all the time. And, and, uh, and I think that's great. And you guys really do a good job of that. And um, so let's just, I want to show your website real quick, right? Sure. Uh, I've got that up. So this is, davis's website and what platform are you using uh this is through go high level and your ink soft stores right still mm -hmm. yes correct so you use go high level as your main web page but your online store creation is all through ink soft why are you still using ink soft we have built a very good flow with it at the moment uh to create to process and um that and we have a lot of stores so if we were to transition off we we that's a very big financial decision to make because it's a lot of work at the uh to get those moved over to a new platform and you're constantly evaluating other platforms am i right every other week it seems like i'm speaking yeah. with a vendor or staying on top of what the newest trend is and our next move will have to save us a lot of time increase our speed um, in every department from production to building to selling, there has to be a substantial jump in order for me to want to make that change. Yeah, it's not like, uh, you know, it's for, for you to make that decision is going to, it's going to be a major thing. And you're looking for some particular outcomes and time savings and cost savings for you to do that. Exactly. Uh, we want to be able to, instead of building a store from one hour to two hours to 10 minutes to 30 minutes, right? right. Um, processing, we want automated processing in the morning or we want automated purchasing or we want automated check-ins or um, so there's there's things that, but we want all, we want to have, if not all, most of the pieces in our next piece of software. Right, right. And so you have all different types of customers with an online store, right? Mm -hmm. For somebody watching right now, right? If they... Maybe they only have a couple online stores and maybe they don't have any, right? What do you think is the easiest way to sell an online store to a client? Right? What's, what's, how do you, what do you guys think about that? My opinion is sell who you're more comfortable with. Don't try to, if you, if you focus on the racing industry, right? I got a friend who just focuses on that market. Set up stores for people in that industry. Don't try to go set up school stores and sell team uniforms. If that's not your client base, build for what exactly who you're currently working with and start there. Don't try to expand before you uh, like don't try to run before you know how to walk, like work with the people that understand that you're learning something new or you're trying it for the very first time. So really, it's about selling what you know. Exactly. And yeah. they're much easier to work with because they know you. Right. Right. And and so uh, also. I think the online store should be focused on solving a problem for that customer. Don't you think? 100%. So what problems are you guys talking about when you present, hey, we could do an online store. Here's the problem. And so you're talking about their problem, right? Yeah. What? How do you guys talk about that? So in regards to, let's say, a sports team, right? a customer is uh, typically a booster parent or a coach and they are already donating their time or if they're a coach they're being severely underpaid to coach the high school sport or the youth sport or not at all right and they're already given their time and they are pulled 10 different ways because a million people are asking them questions what they want to do is they want to offer something to their family or their kids families or whatever group or their fans without having it to affect their day-to-day. -day. 
And that's really what we focus on. We're solving problems as far as delivery or how fast things run or, hey, I have a big game next Friday. Can we launch a super flash uh, fast sale, right? We're solving a pain point for that customer. And instead of them having to do it like count shirts or bag or bring all the stuff home, we're handling all that for them. Okay. And so we're on your website. So can we click one of these? Click custom sports uniforms? Uh, do or the fundraiser. Launch a fundraiser. Fundraiser? Mm -hmm. Come on, website work. There we go. <laughs> Come on, website work. That doesn't sound confident there, David. <laughs> I, I don't want to fail in the limelight. <laughs> right, so, so here's where we are. If we're a new customer, right, we're, we've got these icons, right? Mm -hmm. We can sign up now, get, get the details here. Watch. There's a little video. Again, with the call to action. It's important to have a call to action, don't you think? It's important to have a call to action no matter where they're scrolling. Um we have multiple call to actions. After every piece, we have a call to action. So depending on what they're looking at, they, uh, they're they able to click a button without having to scroll back up or down too far. You know, what I like here is that you're, you're telling them about, you're giving them the expectation before they click anything, because clicking a button feels dangerous sometimes. We <laughs> don't know what's behind the button, so we don't want to click the button. And you're telling them what's going on. So if you fill out a five-minute form, you can choose some cool designs. You're showing a template, right? You're saying, okay, if I approve the art, we're going to send over your online store art within two days. And once the art's approved, we move into the design building stage, which means, hey, you're going to create a store within two days. And then we're going to give you the store link, but we also give you all the social media ads so you can share. So guess what that tells me? That tells me that I don't have to do anything. You're doing everything for me. And then here's the check. And then you say, you're going to get the monthly payout on the 15th of every month once the profits reach $50. So you're giving them all, you're answering all the questions before I click the button, right? Yep. I now, try to front load all the information. How beneficial is this, Davis, just for how you've set this up and and what before you had this website right talk about the before and after of doing it this way our first website was a simple form that they wanted to sign up for there was no marketing there was no telling them what's going on this was stuff we would get a form and email them different pieces our sales team not all of them had it right and it was just by doing this, we're saving five steps. And while the customer's interested in what our program offers, they can see it. They can get their information. They don't have to talk to a human if they don't want to just grab those details. Yeah. And um, so this is great. I'm not going to watch the video or anything, but, you know, so if you're curious about how to do this, go to B Graphics, and that's with an X. And uh, checked out their website and um, and see how they do it, and maybe you can have a similar success, right? So, um, so you've got twelve hundred online stores, right? How many of those are you selling? Twelve hundred online stores every single day. What are you guys doing? No, um, I have the opinion that the numbers are in the masses, right? Uh, we at any given time. 30 to 40% of our stores are active. Some may not be active a week or a month or in off seasons, but they're still available to that client. They don't feel like they're on a timer and they can't go buy something if they want to buy a t-shirt in June. Right. The, uh, what, what it is though, it aggregates everything together and our daily online orders keep growing and growing. So the more stores, the more numbers, the more growth. Now, are you putting new ideas in the store, like a 4th of July or the fall festival or football or Halloween or Christmas or, you know, whatever? Are you putting new ideas in all the stores so that gives you more opportunity to make sales? So in the past, we haven't. Um, we've, we've done it on very small scales and it's been successful. Um, what we're working to do now that we've systemize the building process is systemizing the updating process in the yearly sales to how to maximize the value of that customer throughout their buying season. 
And what you just said is a prime example of how you can do that. Uh, everybody that has a fall store can launch a Christmas flash sale to their customers or can launch a uh, Easter bunny t-shirt, a uh, peeps design or whatever with their, uh, with their logo on it. And what, that's what we're working on now is how to, how to maximize that customer's customers. Right. So Joe's got a question. Hey, Joe. Joe's coming to Shirt Lab Austin, by the way. How do you help them promote their stores? Joe's in uh, Georgia. How do you so, help them promote their stores? Joe, this is going to be uh, do this is going to be part of the Shirt Lab uh, conversation. Shirt Lab Austin. Uh, we give social ads that we create, and um, we will also give them a downloadable PDF. They automatically get sent to them. And it tells them here, uh, you do this, this, and this. And then we also send follow-ups of, hey, have you sent this out to your customers? Have you, week one, we send something. Week two, we send something. So we keep them updated through the process to make sure that person's doing it via email or text. And you're doing that with automation without it's Joe's job or Fred's job or Susie's job to send that to everybody. You've got it set up where somebody does an online store and you uh, click the trigger and then all these things pop out on a particular day with the right information are automatically. So nobody has to remember how to do that. Exactly. And we, we thought we wanted to do it before, but we couldn't until we were able to get into some of the automation. Right. Josh has a question. Do 20% of the stores do 80% of the volume or how does that break down? It's the Pareto principle. We want to know. It's not quite that. Uh, we work with a lot of smaller organizations, so the numbers aren't quite 80-20, but they're probably 65-35, Josh. So you're not you're not wrong. Yeah. Um, so so tell people what that means, because not everybody understands that, right? So so the 80-20 rule, just back to what he did, is 20% of your customers are 80% of your business revenue. And if you flip it and focus on all the ones that don't give you revenue, you're missing the core of your customer base. And while that is 100% true in our bulk order status, it is not 100% true in our online stores just because of the sheer volume and then where they're at or what type of group they are. Um, right. It kind of varies around a little bit. So if you've got 1,200 stores, 35% of them is getting you 65% of your money. Yeah easy so how uh and are you identifying that that top 35 percent and and going after and trying to clone more of those what are you doing with that well i can say we're not doing what we should be doing um oh, great. but we are working on the data to get there um <laughs> that is that is part of the growth strategy right not everybody you don't have the answer all the time or you're not doing it right all the time or you're not doing what you should because you're focused on something else and that's okay but being aware of it is also important too that you want to get there and you want to figure out like that's where we're putting in this year on how to maximize their season we haven't done that two years we weren't doing that two years ago so now we're as we do that we maximize that 35% season and get those numbers to climb um, as it goes on. So it's not something you can do overnight uh, unless you, you got a massive team, but as long as you're working towards it, that's what is, that's, what's important. You got to start. Uh, yeah. Right. So are <clears throat> you've got access to the data, but you just haven't used it yet. Is that what I'm hearing? We do have access to the data. We're just not fully implemented yet. Thanks, Marshall. Right. Hey, thanks, <laughs> thanks for putting it out in public on live. Uh, you're not doing things you need to be doing. I appreciate your honesty, right? Um, so Joe says, thank you, Alan. See you in Austin. Josh, follow up. Uh, and is a one-to-one -one relationship between the account and the store? Or do most accounts have several stores for different purposes, seasons, et cetera? I would say... A lot of them are 95% one to one, right? We do have some people that run multiple organizations, um, but majority of them are on a one off base. And that's because it's a lot of sports oriented where the, there's a lot of turnover. 
and how you handle that turnover is really the tricky part. Sorry, I keep well, it's the booster mom, right? And this year, you know, little Ralphie's in, so I'm going to help out. And next year, Ralphie's not doing it, and why? Well, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. And then you got num somebody new comes in, doesn't know anything, right? Yeah, exactly. So one part of the process is, is did you follow up with them before they gave up that position and find out who's coming in next and contact them? So we want that transition to be easy. Yep. And that's the final step of our selling season. Have you made contact with the next person in charge? Right. right. Do they love you yet? <laughs> well, how can you make it easy for them? Right. So if they come in as a newbie and here are all the answers and I don't have to do anything, I'm already going to love you because I bet you there's a lot of fear associated with taking on the role. Right. So, uh, real, yeah, exactly. A real quick thing is um, you tell me John's taking over for you after you. You give me John's email address. I shoot a quick video. Hey, John, my name's Davis from B Graphics. Pleasure to meet you. I uh, Marshall told me you're taking over the role. I can't wait to uh, work with you. Hey, if you want to schedule 15 minutes of time, click my calendar, check me out, or let's let's chat real quick, get to know each other. And hey, since you're taking over the role, here's a $50 coupon code. Go pick something out for your new role at the at the booster group. Oh, there you go. Make it easy and then give them something to make them happy. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So uh, we got 10 minutes left. Where are we on our topics today? Uh, um, so let's get into this real quick. And then I want to, uh, do the, uh, a shirt lab Austin last, right? So, so you're going to be talking about this in Austin, right? So it's kind of a segue kind of topic, right? But one of the things you're a big pro proponent of is automating as much as you possibly can. And you're always looking for better tools, right? How has uh, the, just the idea of automation, which is what, by the way, Shirt Lab Austin is all about, how has that impacted positively for your company? Well, I can tell you it's caused me to automate my sales process because my production is much faster. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we spoke about that uh, earlier today, and I can get things through the pipeline faster. But now there's... I can't sell it fast enough to keep up with the pipeline, right? Right. So how do you pick? You got to start somewhere. And once you do one thing, it instantly makes you want to do another. And what was the comment you said earlier? It was it shows when your uh, automation shows you're where you're weakest. Yeah. And it shows you time after time after time. It uh, It is a wicked battle that never stops. And it's like uh, if you're if you if you like to gamble or whatever, it's like chasing that next fix to get to get a win or whatever. Like you just constantly want to keep doing more and more right. because you can see what the value of that investment is very, very quickly. Right. Right. Can 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 we share what we're working on together right now? Yeah. So talk about what we just talked about yesterday. We are the scheduling. Yeah, yeah. So if you didn't know, uh, uh, Davis and I, he's one of my coaching clients, right? So we were working on a project in his shop right now. So talk about what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, so we are working on fixing how we schedule, right? So we're a heat press shop. Um, we were missing key bits of information that we needed to process the order so the production manager could do his job. Um, we didn't know what we were missing. We didn't know we couldn't do what we wanted to do without the data. So the first step was simply fixing the data. Let's get it in there. And um, that allows us to then process every additional piece of the store uh, through, through production to schedule and make sure things are shipping out on time. And yeah. we've got it. Oh, go ahead. And, well, I was going to say the key piece here is what we want is decisions made in advance. So what they're working on is, and he's got multiple pieces of equipment. So as orders are coming in, what we want is the system to decide in advance next week or whatever when we're working on something, that's going to heat press three, and we're going to be doing it on Thursday, and, and everything is based on some key pieces of information. 
which is the production date needs to be assigned when the order is coming in. And, and that way the flow is correctly. So the idea here is how many jobs can we do a day, you know, which is velocity, capacity, right? How fast do we do it? How much do we normally do? And then it's landing on the right piece of equipment in advance. So everything is routed correctly to show up. So if you think about, for example, how an airport works, when you book a plane ticket to Austin, Texas to arrive <laughs> on the date for sure, right, right? How does it know that it's going to get there at 10 o'clock and it's going to be on gate C3 or whatever, right? So this is how they do it in other areas, right? We want to do that with our shop, right? So when we book a job online with an online store and we're going to be doing 24 pieces of the thing with the kangaroo, like that needs to be routed correctly. And if we automate that, and this is what they're working on in, in B graphics, to a press in advance without somebody making that decision, right? That's the idea. Yeah. So the key piece of information here is when does it need to leave the building? How long does it take to work, right? And then we build for that, right? And based on what we normally do. So it's it's simple but complex at the same time. And uh, and so uh, Davis's uh, guy, Stefan, right? This is this is his challenge right now. And uh, they implemented something today, and they already find out found out what there's stuff that isn't working, right? Exactly. We know that was going to happen, right? When you automate a process, things are going to break because you didn't think about something. Now you got to fix something. And then you do that, and guess what? It it works, right? It's it's a journey, right? It's it's, it's never easy, right? Pro, pro tip, only pick one thing at a time, though. Pro tip, no, <laughs> one thing at a time. And then what we want to do is we want to just get it to work and get and, re, and fine-tune it as we go, right? But you got to start, right? They're... they're there is no waiting for it to happen and it's not going to fix itself. Right. You got to exactly. do it. Right. So, um, you know, run out of time. You got to wrap it up. We are. So let's yeah, talk about a little Alan there. Thank you. <laughs> so let's talk about shirt lab Austin. So right now, if you go to shirt lab live.com slash early bird, you can save a hundred dollars on the ticket. Right. That ends at the end of the month, and then it's just full price, okay? Also, our hotel block ends at the end of the month, which is, you know, Sunday, right, Easter. So we want you guys to get going. It's going to be a lot of fun, okay? And um, so we have a schedule of events. Uh, we have our networking party. Uh, I need to update the website here. It's actually at this bar called Cover 3. And this is our uh, really super famous, awesome networking party. Uh, we have a rock, paper, scissors uh, tournament, and you can win a uh, Stahl's Hotronics uh, uh, Vision IQ 360 hat press. Uh, Josh, who's still on here, I think, hopefully, he won that a couple years ago, and he's made like 30 grand with that thing that he won from coming to a shirt lab event, right? So That press is awesome. Yeah, it's great. And uh, I like the double platen on it. That's the, the cool thing. Mm -hmm. That's Friday night. Um, and then we have all day Saturday, 420 at the conference center here. And Davis is going to be sharing a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, and then we have a dinner uh, that night at Maggiano's, which is an Italian place. Uh, we have our private room, private bartender, the whole deal. This is one of those dinners, the industry dinners that last three or four hours. Like it's just, you know, it's going to be lots of fun. Here's our hotel block. Here's our speakers. Look at this guy. Look at that smile. Right? <laughs> um, so we start off with Justin McKibben. If you don't know who Justin is, uh, if, uh, he spoke at Shirt Lab Atlanta. And uh, so he has a team of VAs that do his lead generation for him. Right. So what is handed to him is a warm lead. And all he has to do is close it. He's got a whole team of people that work for him that does this. He's going to show the magic behind the curtain of how to do that. Davis, of course, is going to talk about automating his sales and sales strategies, like kind of what we we're talking about today. 
Cole's going to talk about automating order entry. So you've closed the sale. You got the thing. How do you get it into the system without touching it? He's going to show how to do that. Um, my buddy Shane was stoked on printing in Vegas. Is going to talk about how do you handle inventory without without all automated, right? So he's got a whole process that they do there. He's going to be showing that. And they got a heck Chris, of a setup. Chris, who works for Deloitte, he's the master at uh, automating uh, KPI metrics and getting the data and then using it. So he's going to show the secrets behind that. And then at the end of the day, we're going to have a breakout group. So you heard from these guys and you've got your special question or whatever, you're going to be hanging out with them for about an hour and you can talk to them about whatever you want to talk about. Right. And then of course we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, you know, and it, it, I'm not going to read everybody here, but you know, a huge shout out to these guys. They pay the freight on this stuff and we couldn't do it without them. So we really appreciate that. And uh, we really want you guys to sign up. Right. So shirtlablive.com slash earlier bird. Click this green button, get your ticket, right? Would love to see you there. If you've got questions, you got problems, you need some help, whatever, reach out to me. I'm happy to help get that uh, solved for you. Um, and we'd love to see you there. And, and um, Davis, you've, you've been to these events. You've spoken uh, mm -hmm. a little bit with some of our Shirt Lab Summit and stuff. What's the benefit of being part of Shirt Lab Tribe or being involved with Shirt Lab? What do you think? So since we've started, uh, the business has done nothing but grow. Um, we've networked with people. Uh, we've sent orders to partners in Tribe across the country. Uh, we've printed for Tribe members. We've sent them to Tribe members, right? So you build a bigger network of how to get things done. And anytime you go to a live event, just the conversations you have with people that may be struggling with the same thing you're doing or like real face-to-face -face, honest conversations with someone else in your shoes is probably the biggest thing. It's some of my closest friends in the industry are in this group just because we'll text or we'll call or we'll check in or, Hey, how do you do this? And you, in most cases, if you just call the business, they're not going to share it with you. Right. But uh, a friend that I'll, very gladly share, hey, here's my new employee hire form or whatever, and make it easy. Why mm -hmm. Why do we need to battle and all create this together when right. he's in Arizona and I'm in here in Pittsburgh and we got to come up with something? Right. Yeah. So it's, it's good. And uh, one of the great things about our live events is we really carve out lots of time for what we call hangout time, right? So, yeah. um, you know, and uh, so we have uh, lots of time uh, at breakfast, lots of time in between. We, you know, 30 minutes when we do our breaks, we do an hour for lunch. You know, that dinner, that, that that's at that night. Uh, we used to charge to go to the VIP dinner. And um, now it's because we've got some really great sponsors. We've got it so everybody can come and you don't have to pay extra to go to that. So it's kind of a really cool hang. And when, we try to do something different every single time. If you've been to a shirt lab thing before, uh, uh, you know, there's, it's not each event. It's its own separate thing. If you've been to one, you don't, you have already been, I'm, I don't need to go. No, you need to go because it's different information. It's different speakers. Even with the speaker who's presented before, like Justin, right? He's giving new material now. It's not the same stuff, right? So exactly, um, you need to come and listen and learn, and it's lots of fun. So uh, anyway, that's that's that. So um, we'd love to see you there. Reach out to me if you've got any questions, marshall at marshallatkinson.com. I'd love to help you. If you need help getting there or whatever, I, I, maybe I can help you, you know, so just let me know. I'm a problem solver by nature, right? So uh, I want you there, right? So uh, let me let me help you, right? So, uh, all right, Davis, I'm going to give you the last word. What do you got? Uh, should we give the quote or should we save that? We'll save it. Hey, I uh, appreciate you having me on. Happy 200th. And you guys all have a great day. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next week. Next week, by the way, We've rescheduled Sean Kirkpatrick, uh, uh, and he owns the uh, uh, MNR Digital Squeegee and the MNR Quattro, and he's going to talk about how he's using both on a single decoration. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we'd love to. Uh, he, he had a little issue where we um, 
he was supposed to be on and couldn't make it. So we've got him coming back next week. So we'll look for that. And we'll see you guys next week. Have a great Easter weekend, and we'll see you next week. We'll see Later you. Later on. Bye.